Certain days during the year are set aside to celebrate our Earth. But one documentary recently released doesn't want to wait for a day. A fresh film dives into three indigenous architects who are using their cultural heritage as an inspiration for designs that revere indigenous ways while celebrating the Earth. Take a look. Long before skyscrapers, suburban sprawl, and parking garages overtook our landscape, Canada was shaped by mountains, forests, and grassland. But within a few hundred years, a relative blip on the continent's vast geological timeline, our cities, streets, and sidewalks have reshaped large swaths of the country and brought significant ecological changes along with it, most often not for the better. But not all believe our current path of paving over and stacking up is set in stone. To love the rivers and the forests and the mountain streams and to love the clear waters and the wind that blows across our brow. To love as we love. To young indigenous architects, if they spoke from the heart, it would show another way of looking at the world. A new documentary, From the Earth to the Sky, showcases a movement of indigenous architects looking to draw on the centuries of skill and tradition from their ancestors. They, they had the, uh, the Ishkin or the, the winter home pit house structure, which was a circular structure. And the Coast Salish have their, their big long houses. So we wanted to kind of morph the idea of pit house and long house together and create one sort of expression. The director, Ron Chapman, hoping the film doesn't just inspire more Indigenous youth to play an active part in the moulding of the landscape, but to inspire non-Indigenous people like himself, to reconsider how we see and value our surroundings, to remember the land we stand on is not ours and should be respected. I got to know uh, the Indigenous communities like I never would have had I not had this incredible opportunity. And it was an incredible education. I, I you know, and, and, and what I wanted to do with the film was to be able to take those things that were such an aha moment for me, that, was, that were such learning experiences for me, and put them in the film in a way that they would hopefully uh, connect with other non-Indigenous uh, people and who would then see Indigenous cultures through new eyes. A line can be drawn from all the architects spotlighted to Douglas Cardinal, the country's very first professional Indigenous architect and one of the most revered and respected architects Canada has ever produced. Cardinal made it his mission to use his gift of shaping and building to respect the land upon which his structures stand. One of his early notable works, the Canadian Museum of History formerly known as the Canadian Museum of Civilization. I wanted it to be a very powerful stone form that was shaped by wind and water and felt like it grew from the land, symbol of land and water and people entwined in the architecture. Because what I wanted to say was, we came from nature and we're part of nature. That's what I wanted to express in the building as a sculptural work of art. Daniel Glenn is another renowned architect driving the movement. A member of the Crow Nation in Montana, Glenn grew up drafting for his father's architecture and construction firm by the age of 14, the only indigenous owned firm of its kind in the state. So I decided to go to architecture school. And there I really uh, started to, be, to love the profession and what it could be. But also I got very skeptical of it because I found in the schools of architecture, it's mostly about designing for those super rich or for the elites of society. Did you come out of it sort of wanting to enact change? So when I came back, you know, and started, I. By doing that process, I realized I had skills that could actually help people who had a very little means and that, that there were things that we could do as architects, you know, in this case, affordable housing and, and developing culturally responsive 
uh, architecture and climate responsive architecture that would work for very low income people. Glenn is responsible for the internationally recognized design of the Little Bighorn College on the Crow Reservation in Montana, drawing on the thousands of years of history of community based design and technique of Indigenous people. We're just uh, facilitating the voices of our of our own people in other indigenous communities and trying to to strengthen the voice of our ancestors and to create a contemporary version of an indigenous architecture that reflects and celebrates our heritage and culture and res and respects mother earth My first build project. It's up. Wanda De La Costa is a member of the Saddle Lake Cree First Nation in northern Alberta, now a professor of architecture at Arizona State University. She also works with urban indigenous youth to reclaim and learn about their culture, a reversal of the role her mother played as a residential school survivor. Really the most important part of, of being a teacher is just giving them that space to be able to rethink from a cultural point of view, what else could be possible? And also give them the space to think about how their specific cultural life ways and traditions and protocols and norms, knowledges that live within our communities can be integrated into architecture. Della Costa, like all of the architects featured in the film, coming into the industry largely as an outsider, eager for change, now respected worldwide and inspiring new generations of Indigenous architects. Her work and teaching carrying on her ancestors' skill and traditions, and driven by Douglas Cardinal, who showed her what was possible. I mean, he's a mentor to all of us. We we knew he had a, a harder path than, than we did. You know, we have kind of a, a, a difficult path because we we are, all of us feel we are opening the gates to this subject but he was the first one to push on it. It's our duty now to take those gates and open them wider so the next generation has less fight to do. Peter Meyer for Inside the Story.